This is the It's Time to Refresh podcast with Brad Refresh, the podcast about life, music, traveling, shit, literal shit that is, and weird and wacky stories with Brad and a range of guests from the planet Earth. Feel free to share the pod with your pals, your mom, your neighbor's dog, or even your shrink. It's all fun. You can follow our Facebook group called It's Time to Refresh Community or It's Time to Refresh on Instagram. Write into the pod, ask questions, and share your stories. Enjoy the pod! Hey kid, what time is that? It's time to refresh! You all right, how are we doing? I uh, just want to take two minutes of your time before we start this week's podcast uh, to tell you about our Patreon. Patreon is a tool that we're using to help the podcast grow, um, give you better content and, well, as I said, just let the podcast grow. So we've got three tiers. The first tier, there's only 20 of these spaces available and it's £1 for life and that's for It's Time to Refresh Originals. So if you've tuned in from day one uh, and you want to join the cause, you can sign up for £1. Um, just follow the link in the description. Uh, we've got the standard Patreon, which you get access to bonus episodes, uh, some exclusive content, Patreon specials, which we'll be recording, and uh, early access to all future episodes. So you'll be getting them on a Tuesday instead of a Friday, uh, which I think is fucking amazing for three quid. That's less than a coffee. And then we've got our Legend Status VIP Patreons, which is uh, £10. And that gets you tickets to all my gigs um, and it will get you free entry to any It's Time to Refresh associated um, events, gigs in the future. Um, so that's a little hint of what's coming up in the future. Um, if you do like the podcast, then please share it with your mates. We are trying to grow this little thing we've got going. We've got some amazing guests coming up in the future as well. Um, and we want this to go bigger and better. So sign up at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash it's time to refresh thank you enjoy the episode uh back once again for another podcast uh this is episode 31 on this episode we've got as paul h would say adf baby i listen to that mix it is with her it is paul i had the sample on, on the mixes when you were coming in. uh i would say uh, uh a producer in the scene who's recently new to me, I'd say recent as in sort of 12 to 18 months, maybe. I yeah, yeah, yeah. think. Right. And when I heard his stuff, it's very much what I'm into, so I thought you need to come on the podcast. Um, and today we're at Pirate Studios in Liverpool. Um, that's why it's a bit of a, of a weird setup we've got going, but I quite like it. Well, it's either that or go to ours and the kids are running out. <laughs> we've got no hope of getting anything yep. done, have we? So. <laughs> but I like it. I like what we've got We've got going here. Like it's, uh, this is what the studio will look like when it's done up, up, up mine. And we're in the middle of doing it at the minute. That's mm. why, a bit of an explanation of why there wasn't a podcast last week. We're sort of, I had a gig on Saturday, which we'll get into. But another thing was, um, we're in the middle of building the studio where... It's going to be sort of, everything's going to be based there. I know I've been travelling for it, but it's going to be like proper setup, um, lighting, uh, proper sound, soundproofing. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a pro proper pro setup and I want it to be the best product possible and I want it to be recognisable to people. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Got so it. That, that's the type of the vibe we're going for. So anyways, uh, ADF, what, what is it? Well, first of all, nice to meet you, Brad, and thanks <laughs> yeah. for having me on. Much appreciated, so nice uh, to meet you. Yeah. Is it, yeah. Is it to do with your name? Because obviously your name's Alan. Right? Um, no, so uh, everyone asks me this. So, uh, Albert Stonk Factory, um, so no, you want to ask me later. So, I, I went to Mo training. Yeah. Um, so, we we'll saved that for later. And Rob's one of the teachers in there. Rob Kane's one of my good mates. Yeah. Um, so, shout to Rob. <laughs> um, yeah, and for some reason, for the past, what? Well, 10 years he's called me Albert my name's Alan and you're making music he said if you're on SoundCloud and you see the same song two different mixes and you mm. see Alan B mix or Albert Stonk Factory mix which one are you clicking mm. and my brain goes to the stupid name first so that so that's what we come up with and um, I don't know if it's pulled off or not <laughs> um, really that's what it is it's just he just said just think of the most 
that's half the same you can think of because if people are looking yeah if they're anything like me well, certainly oh, well, well, you're, you're gonna think what's that aren't you and click it so regardless you get the click <laughs> and if you like it you like it and then yeah. you know what i got fed up right now with stock factory out all the time and just clapped it down well adf to be fair i i this is relatable to me as well if when i see names and it's like I don't know, fucking Dave. I don't know. I get it. Dave I R or something yeah. like that. I always think it's. I know it sounds bad because my name's like uh, like down as Brad Refresh, which is like sort of thing. Uh, I always think it's probably just like a bedroom producer, and that's the first thing you go to. It's like oh, they haven't even been creative enough to come up with their own sort of name. So it's like that, that, I know it gives off like a. If you see, if, so when I see an ADF, I'm like, strange. Like, I'll I'll look into this. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas if, what were you called before? I was I was just Alan B. I was Al just my name. It, see, it's, it's, see, Alan it's B. Very, I would be less just... inclined to look. Does that make sense? That, yeah, it sounds it's, absolutely it's, ridiculous, but it's it's like do you know what? There's a lot of people just use their own name, but for, yeah. for me, I just didn't think it sounded exciting enough. Nah, no, it just seemed very plain to to me. Uh, a name but like I've had, against I've you. had Rob. Yeah. Pushing me from behind, lad. You need to be. You need to like <coughs> create something. Yeah. Don't start. Right. Right. Yes, he said. You, you need to create something. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I look for example, Rob. Now he's making this like techie stuff, but it's history repeats itself. Now I get that name. Yeah, I think because that's he class. started off playing house and all that anyway, and it's just it's, it makes sense. It's the, but class. He's already got that name with his name, and he. But I think for yeah. me, I'm not gonna put Alan Barwise mix. It's just. It's just. Yeah, I, it's, 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 I've always it's thought about rebranding, but I just thought like I've put too much time and effort and everything into I'm it. I'm thinking like, if I if I move to a different style of music at any point, I probably yeah. would just whack my own name on it yeah. because there's then a very massive difference between the two. So yeah. obviously, me donk stuff, and if I ever move, because I, I I wouldn't mind going down the route of pumping house me. Because yeah, that's what I've could do. That's obviously what I grew up on. I had a player at home as well. Yeah. Um. So I wouldn't mind going down that route at some point, and I will probably just whack my own name on that. Yeah. Um. So I think Glover's doing it at the moment. He's slowed himself down and some totally slower stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I know he's having a little go at it as well, which is yeah. It's nice to see. Mm. It's certainly nice to see because I think. The original music is well, obviously we're in Liverpool here today, yeah. aren't we? So it's it's those them some Scouse house, don't it? <laughs> and if you look at the original Scouse house stuff, it was one forty, one four three, yeah, wasn't it originally? If not, maybe even one three eight maximum, one four three, yeah. And look how well it worked. I have preference, so I was telling you off off the pod. Um, I've been producing music lately, and the latest track that I've done was one forty. Mm. I've sort of, I sort of know it's not going to work within the 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 bounce scene, but as a whole, I think it'll work on dance floors. Like I think it'll work. Yeah. You could, it's something that you could drop in because the track it is as well. It's it's a remix of um, a known tune, so I know for a fact I could give it to like a local pub jock or something like that, and it play and it wouldn't feel too out of place, especially with how the chart sounds at the minute. Yeah, like, you look at that jumping and pumping, don't you? And what, what, mm. what's that about one three what? The later one thirty is definitely yes, yeah, so it uh, is, isn't it? It's above the one three five, isn't yeah. it? So you know you can sort of see. Is it coming full circle again? Yeah. Well, that that, board, is the, that water is the that question because the if it is, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's a lot of us out there who yeah. are ready to go again. That border tune, that's like one three seven, one three eight, something like that. Mm -hmm. Do you know, like, and that's that's in the chart. So uh, I think it is. I'm just guessing, but like, but you look at like, for example, e e even some of the bigger festivals now, if it like. Was it you and McVick had dropped out some more? Oh. Dropped out some more in Steelyard? Yeah. On, at, at Greenfields? There's loads of stuff. So hopefully it just comes. Yeah. Um, Patrick Toppin's one for playing. Um, oh, what is it? The Miss Peppermint thing. Um, Welcome to tomorrow. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. my mama blank. So he, he's known for playing that. It, it, for me, a more scouse house track than that. The thing is, have you noticed though? See the younger ones now who are coming through. Like I said, younger ones like I'm fucking, like fucking fifty. <laughs> but you know what I mean. But like yeah. the, the the new ge next generation of DJs coming through, they're all playing like say for instance they're not they're not genre specific. So I heard um, is it the uh, Hannah Lang play and I've seen Ben Helmsley play and I've seen 
Mm. Um, like all them lot and they're playing one minute they're playing a house tune then they're playing a techno tune then they'll play they'll throw a donk tune in there and it's just it's like a very mixed bag isn't it yeah. if you listen to a set it's a very mixed bag yeah. which is not a bad thing and then really. playing like happy hardcore as well and a drum and bass and it's just like go for it like if that's the way if that's the style you want to play then do it it's not really for me but if it, wor- if it works it works doesn't it at the end of the day yeah um, but it's just one of them so we'll get into you um, what have you been up to lately so lately, um, not a lot. You I've seem just... to be banging out tunes constantly. Yeah, I mean, I, I do give the music the time it deserves. I've just got yeah. myself a new job on that. That'll come at some point. So I've just yeah. got so I'm, I'm spending a lot of time. Obviously, in my, my job pays the bills. Yeah, it funds my music. It funds everything your job does, not it. So I've, I've, it takes up a lot of my time. That, but no, the music still gets it still gets me weekends and like yeah. the, the later part of the week. So I, I get it gets a few hours a night. And certainly the weekends, um, I don't know, just, out, just sort of out and about. And yeah. So it's, it's like, I know we had this conversation but like just before, and it's like, sometimes I just sit there with my headphones on and just listen to something fucking weird. <laughs> I just think, like, it's mad. I, I listen to sort of like classical music and think, shit, I can do something with that. Yeah. How can I recreate, I can never recreate it the way it is because God knows how they got that to start like that. Yeah. Back in the 1800s. Or even, sam- even sample but, it as well. Yeah, like, but I mean, it, I mean, so I listen to anything. Yeah. But sometimes it is a case of just putting your headphones on. Every single tune I've ever wrote a rip off or something, like I've never, it's, and and I don't care what anyone says, like everyone is copying someone, there's no, there's no way. Everything I've, I've done like, is a rip off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, someone, even, if someone years ago hadn't have took the name Sample Snatcher, I'd have had that now, yeah. but it was already gone years ago. But it's like one of those yeah, things, it's, like, it's, I'm right, I, I, I release some original stuff, mm. but it's all come from, stem from somewhere. So, for instance, I wrote a tune not so long ago, and it was, um, I'd, I'd, I'd heard a, an 80s I think it was like a, like you know the big fucking long haired bands like a bit like a Bon Jovi I can't remember what the band's called off the top of my head but, but do you know what I'm going about with the big fluffy hair and, yeah, that, yeah. and the big power chords in the tunes and I heard this this power chord and it was just like this this riff was class um, I will find out what it is and I'll, I'll let you know on the podcast but um, and I thought oh this is good this like so all I done was I just I just rewrote it in the thing mm. and I just, and it was in like I can't remember what key it was in but it was in major like an F, F major for instance and I just made it in def minor and it, it, it sounded more moodier but mm. it still had the, the, the big thing that you're after and I then think, nobody's ever picked up on it so it's like one of them things you know I think <clears throat> you know no, obviously going original sh- should be the way it goes yeah. it really does need to go that way Um because don't forget back when I was young and all that stuff, I know there was a lot, there was a lot of originals, obviously a lot of remixes still, but there was original stuff. Look at Ultra B, for example. I know it's a rip off of something else, but, and there's a lot of like, it was, yeah, it, it, it's a strange one, but even if you go original, because there's only so much you can do within yeah. Bounce, or Scouse House, whatever yeah. you want to call it. There's only so many, keys so channel, many right? things you can do with it, so it's always it's always going to resemble something else. Yeah. Regardless, so it's it's and it's another a tough well, not to crack that. It's like you might do a, you might write a chord progression and think, "Fuck me, I've just wrote like the thing," and it, subconsciously you've just you've heard it somewhere else, mm. and it, that it's factual. Like they've, they've proved that that's that's what it is. I think it doesn't go down well when you play it out, does it? People out one of the yeah things they know because yeah for example I'd, you'd probably agree with this is that when you're out and you're there sort of brings back a memory don't you, you get that euphoric recall of uh, being somewhere don't you yeah. or there's no memories with that original music yet that need the needs it needs time for memories to be made to that yeah. whereas everything that's getting remixed has already got the memories attached to it so instantly it takes you back to that first time you're there you might be in a club yeah but it's still going to transport you back to that place where you were if that makes sense, oh, yeah, you know no, what absolutely. I mean. So, the original music, it's not getting the push it deserves, is it? You know so what, what I mean? Because if I hear something sense. original, I'll support that because I think yeah. it needs to if be it's done. Good, you know yeah. I mean? um, so, what I've been doing is, I, if you listen to my sets, I've been playing loads of known vocally stuff, for instance. And so I've got formulas. I, don't, I won't give it away on the podcast, but I've got formulas <laughs> how I do things. Yeah. Like, I'll find that out later, when <laughs> that camera goes off. But, like, uh, <laughs> say I play X amount of, of, of known tunes and then I'll throw in a, an unknown tune, like mm-hmm. something, maybe one of my own originals, and I'll throw it in and 
just play it and it might get good reaction, it might not. Or, um, so, for instance, I did that uh, Lifting Me Higher tune. Yeah. Um, mm. I first played that, it got nothing. It got like, people were still on the dance floor, but it didn't, because cause it was fresh. And we live, we live in, a, uh, in a world now where nostalgia is a massive thing in every type of media. Welcome to Liverpool, mate. Yeah, no, well, as I say... World's like, biggest yeah, city for nostalgia. That's what it is. The old school thing's massive here. And then you've got, like, oh, yeah. I TV thought it would have tired off by now, but it just hasn't. <laughs> but, like, there's TV programmes that are getting rehashed now because they were big before. i seen something from yesterday. I was reading a, a news report. It was, like, the Beckett and New Back to the Future. And it's, like, it's literally for nostalgia, though. That's why they're doing it. Um... Leave that where it is. I, the I fear, agree. They, they were sound the way they were. Don't touch them. Yeah. It's not going to, because it's not going to be that. Yeah. You know, well, that's, that's it what it is though, isn't it? It's like mm. people chase nostalgia. So, I, I've been I've been playing this and sort of no reaction. Second time I played it, a bit better reaction. And I've been playing it in between big, big anthems mm. on purpose. Yeah, yeah. And we're getting to the point now that I played it last week at Sanctuary at Sopranos that people know it. So it's like whether it is the the it's or I heard this so and so yeah yeah so you're building off something and I'm just using this as an, a one example and I know a lot of there's a lot of DJs who'll do that they'll they'll play a big tune and then they'll bring an original in and it's just trying to break a record and you you might spend six months to a year trying to break one record yeah. but then years down the line all them young people who were out then they'll. You, you're always remembered like for instance since I've been hammering that out been playing it I've noticed that I've been it gets added to a lot of um, Spotify playlists of like just mm -hmm. people's favourites or like stuff like that and it's like so people are looking for it and the amount of people who you see on Shazam nowadays as well who get the phone up in the end you can see the little thing searching for, yeah, it, yeah. for it and it's like people are like they're hearing music for the first time saving it going back listening to it on repeat and then when it does come out on the thing you don't see people Shazam and brothers and sisters. Oh. It's like, do you know what I mean? Because everyone yeah. knows what it is and it's yeah, like, oh, he's another mix of it. But when you do originals, people Show are... Show me oh, loads another one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there's loads. Put that in there. Just put that to bed now. Like, there's loads of stuff that get recycled every year. There's like... Yeah. I, I'm guilty of doing some. Yeah. I'm guilty of it myself, but... We've all there's some it, that need yeah. just leaving. I've I've like, to, I've done it myself, mate. We've all done yeah, it. I do you know what though. I think when it comes to production, you know, it's how you start learning. Is that you, you initially go in remix and stuff, don't you? And try and put yeah. try and put your own little spin on it yeah. in some sort of way. And that, that that is how you learn, isn't it? I don't know if that's the way you learn, but yeah. certainly for me, going into mode, is it first and let's work on a remix. Let's get your on the screen. Let's get yeah. yeah. Following what other people are doing, picking the chords up. Obviously, yeah. it's obviously learning to use your ears, isn't it? And yeah. trusting them. Um, but yeah, you know, everyone starts off at the mixers. But I, the next, next day, uh, yeah, as I said, I, I want to slow myself down. Yeah, I really do. Wanna, I want to go Big down class. to that pump Big and shit. Yeah. Like, like, I don't, I like them called Albert's Donk Factory, but I don't really, I, I, I'm, I wouldn't use a donk all the time. Yeah, no, I mean? maybe my name's shot. wrong, really, yeah. because I like. Like more of a baseline, for example, I've just done raindrops and obviously saying before yeah. a remix of it said the express reach out, but it's got more of a, a poppy punching bass than it has. It's yeah. not a dunk, yeah, but still, it still, it still works, it's still got that poppiness, it's still got yeah, everything the energy it's good, but it's yeah. just not a dunk. Hopefully, we're getting we're, we're hitting. I said it, uh, um, a couple of episodes ago on the podcast, I think we're at an era now. I think the, the, the club industry itself is a, 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 bit, a bit stuck. Not that not stuck. Stuck's the wrong word. Don't take that out of context. It's torn where it wants to go at it's, the moment, yeah, I think. No, no, no one knows. Like, see, see... Would you say it lacks direction at the moment? Yeah. So, like, four years ago, you could see what the trends were and how it, where it was heading. Mm. So, like, when the, big, when the piano stuff came back, when MK was doing, like, that type of thing, and, the, mm. and then you've seen... There was loads of names started doing loads of piano house and stuff like that, and then the organ came back in. The organ got big again within house music, mm -hmm. and it's like you see. But now it's like six. Like if you could sort of predict where it was going to go, sort of a couple of months ahead, whether I'm losing touch of what's going on, or I'm I'm genuinely stuck on I'd what it I'd is. I'd say it's varied because you got the likes of you got the likes of Camel Fat, the Scarlet doing what he does yeah. in that style and the way they do it, and then you, obviously you got someone like Ben Elmsley. Yeah, out there it's a very varied. It, 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 That's good. It's, it's varied, it's isn't good. it? But 
a lot of people. Lot Whereas, of, to be honest, ours isn't. But do you not think I a don't lot think of ours is varied at all? I think it's just very. Do you think a lot of industry same. names are like the, the? So, for instance, I seen something that Rob put up the other day, um, and he was about firing uh, music out to to labels, and he said, "I don't even know what they're looking for anymore. So I don't know who to send it to because." The, I don't think the na- the people who are the the money pushers are like they don't know what to invest in at the, at the moment in time because that's what they get, that, they're they're investment, they investment aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's when a business, started, isn't it? Yeah, really. So when they're looking for the next big tune, I don't think even the people higher up know what the next big thing is going to be. Whereas before, you could sort of you, there's always been a progression of how, like like things work in cycles. You so, looked the club land here and you knew exactly what was coming. Yeah. And you knew what was going to work next. Yeah, and then when the likes of the off, Ultra Beat yeah, era, yeah, exactly. you just knew what was going to come, you knew what sold. It was for me, a little bit predictable, really, when you look back at it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think, I agree with you. I don't think I know where it, no, I don't think anyone knows what they want anymore. I think in about 2010, if my, my, there or thereabouts, 2010, 2011, when the faster stuff sort of died off and I'm talking like not just the bouncing I mean like you're seeing like even hardcore dipped or even um, the Clubland stuff dipped because like Clubland TV at one point obviously you had like on the Clubland albums you had like Hypersonic you had like yeah, yeah, do you know was, what I mean like yeah. just loads of loads of different names on it and then that sort of dipped off but then I think that for, for a short time they were a bit directionless and then this cool house music started coming in and electro and stuff like that and people were jumping all over it you say that though it's always been there the house music at that speed it's always been yeah. there it just, oh, no, laid, it just laid low for a bit yeah mainstream it just yeah. laid low it's always been there hasn't it? but it's like it's it's in cycles though as well so mm-hmm. for instance like you go this is it. getting faster now probably will come back around but yeah it's not gonna come down at 150 yeah oh no not a chance it's really not gonna it's gonna come down and you, you know what you might get that you might just get that 142 or 140 at some point yeah but then you get it's like not going to go any quicker than yeah. that, is it? Yeah. You get like drum and bass that comes around as it well, cycles. That's fucking rapid as hell, innit? Yeah, yeah, but it has, it has like its one, times, one or and then people are like, oh, it's not cool anymore, then they'll move on to the next thing. I mean, it's very... It's getting played by the big superstars yeah. at the moment. It's very much like that, isn't yeah. it, as well? So you've got... What are they pushing at the minute? Because what they're pushing is what people are going to go and search for. But I don't think that yeah, they're even it. there. They're yeah, they're confused at times. Yeah, um, as you say, they're playing... To play like a load of green fields, you know, yeah. you never expect to hear that. Like a few years ago, when when tech was really big, like I think it's it's dipped now. It's it, it it's still big. Don't get me wrong. Like, but it's it's on the decline now. It's not ascending anymore. It's it, mm. it's not. It, I don't understand. It's dead either by any stretch. But it's no, it's, it's very it's big, especially peaked. in Liverpool. It's yeah. very big, but but it's definitely peaked. It's I yeah. Think, I think it's got a more disco here. Yeah. That more disco sort of sound. Disco, as disco, I said, disco comes back yeah. around as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. That comes, that comes and goes all the time. Like one minute it's like cool, you play it, you see all like the hipsters and everything playing mm-hmm. it, and the next minute it's like, oh no, that's that's been and gone now. And it's like it's trends, very, just trends in it. Throwaway music as well, isn't it? Now it's very throwaway, isn't it? Just, yeah. just as quick as it's here, it's as quick as it's gone. Yeah. And therein lies a problem within itself, isn't it? You don't. Everything's dead disposable, just, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. Streaming. It's yeah. not. You know what? I don't. I, I. I. I'm one for moving forward with technology. I'm not one of them that goes ah oh, fucking hell. I learned on a set of vinyls. <laughs> I'm not one of them at all. But the magic of going to find music is gone. Yeah, I, it's I literally like... disappeared. The record shops are gone. The, the magic of going and going. There's only hundred these, and I've got one. <laughs> so you're like fucking hell. Yeah. It. it, it it's lost and I think it's because we did it's just disposal. It's just as quick as it comes, as quick as it gets off. You don't you don't hold on to nothing, do you? No. Anymore. And I think that's that's a problem within itself for me. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Like as a producer as well, it's like, oh like you you you're producing a track and you're like, Why bother? Like if you're just gonna <laughs> uh, you're yeah. doing it to stay relevant, you're not doing it to, to make a timeless track. I, I I'll be honest, it's not for me. I do it because I like it. Yeah. It's fun. I love it. But you, I've just got you, a little place in my heart, and, yeah. and that's just getting bigger and bigger. I don't. I'm not after fame. Yeah. There's certainly no fortune in it. I'm not after fame. Not yeah. like that. I just do because I, in the wrong I love it, though. Do you know what I mean? For, for fame and fortune. Yeah. You know I mean? just love it. Um, I, love I it. won't never grow out of that music because it's what I grew up with. I'm what, 86. Yeah. So I grew up with. 
the old five one, the pleasure rooms, yeah. um, and all that stuff. So I grew up with. I love it still. Yeah, people always say to me like, because obviously, do you know when you when people find out you're a DJ or a producer, and it's like, oh, so like obviously you get the hand gestures of quick, quick, wah. Do you know what I mean? That type of thing. You, you, everyone, it's every DJ gets it, that, it. But it's like it's cringy, isn't it? Yeah. But how comes you play this style of music? Why don't you play what makes you money and stuff like that? I'm like, cause my heart's just not in it. Like, like I oh, like. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I like it, but mm-hmm. it's not for me. It's what me as a. As a I I like thing. little bits of house music because obviously I listen to yeah. a little bit of everything to get inspiration because obviously I want to yeah. make stuff, but it doesn't do nothing for me. Yeah, it doesn't excite me. Like New Year's Eve, um, I'm booked. I'm booked to play on a house night. Right, I'm gonna go and play classic funky house, but I actually like that. Yeah. Because sort of in the year of the pleasure rooms, the funky house scene was coming round, and it, it was there, but it was bigger. Nostalgic. Yeah, it, yeah. so I, I like bits of that. So I've been booked to go and play that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's, but it's not going to excite me as much as playing like bounce stuff. Yeah, bounce with it. Well, at, if if anyone's listened to my set, I always whack a bit of scouse house in there anyway, yeah. because that's uh, just well, you're not going to change me, and that's uh, in what I do. Yeah. Um, Probably doesn't help with getting bookings, but I oh well. Admit, I'm the same. I, yeah. I, I'm almost sure that my, I, there's certain places I don't get booked at because I don't hammer the donk stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, everyone who, who knows me, oh, he's a, he's a bounce donk DJ, like everyone in my area. But like, I'm not playing the the, the hammering donk stuff. Like, I'm playing vocally. Mate, if you come here and just play, then I was worth the donk. Yeah. It'd go down like a fucking lead balloon. Exactly. But if you throw on like you know like a your shining and that an art yeah. beats or some like Q B C D sort of stuff, it goes off. Yeah. Absolutely. But you, you, you throw a big pop and fucking donk on it all the time and I suppose it depends where you're playing, doesn't it? Because obviously if I've got a gig and wiggle lad, I'd obviously play a bit more donk. Yeah. That's obviously what works, but reading your cards. A lot of my stuff's here, mm-hmm. yeah. Reading the cards though, and a lot of my stuff's here, obviously thanks to Paul. Yeah. Might show us race later, you never know. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of my stuff's here. So I think a lot of my when I'm making my music, because I know a lot of my gigs are coming in Liverpool. Yeah. I'm aiming it that way. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not throwing that big heavy donk in it because if I go and play that at the gig, yeah, it doesn't work as well. Exactly, but if I yeah. keep it with a nice chunky bass, it works better. A bit yeah. slower as well, do you know what I mean? The, the I don't play at 150. I'm, we I said this before, I'm 145. Well. <laughs> I'll start yeah. at 145 and I'll go to 148. And I don't... Maybe I'm getting old. Because <laughs> ten years ago I was playing all that Spanish pokey gear at one five five. Yeah. And maybe I've just got old. And I've like obviously the old you get to, yeah, yeah. maybe it slows down. Yeah. But it, yeah, that like that it's that gear for me that. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to dance to something that quick. I, I know exactly where you're coming from. We've sort of got into it there, but we haven't even actually got into your story. So do you want to like sort of wind right back? Because you was you've you've like, touched so, on it. So, so do you want to go things. back to like where that? So uh, right back to the start. I got a set of decks when I was nine. When you were nine. I had the bog standard so, set. I'm from Liverpool, mate. So I'm so from West Derby, Liverpool. West Derby, right. Yeah. Um, so nine years old. Yeah. I asked me, <laughs> I asked me mum and dad for the set of drums. They told me no, they were too loud. Right. I got me a set of decks instead. I think they've ruined ever since yeah, <laughs> like, no difference. But so, I started off with a set of Pro 150s and this right. um, realistic SSM fucking mixer, which is just fucking ridiculous now when you look at it and you think, shit, did I actually fucking use that? No, but yeah, yeah but you start somewhere, somewhere yeah. So, she bought them off a lad who lived around the corner so for something like music? 200 quid. Yeah, so my... My, sis- drum kit, yeah. obviously. my sister's two years older than me, so she was listening to like um she had like club kinetic tapes and stuff. Right. I heard that it was done. Yeah. Uh, I was done. But then I mean he had on the radio when I was growing up on the radio, like we had Lee Butler yeah. on Radio City, so they'd go live from they'd go live from the old five one or whatever, and they had they had the dance shows over the weekend, so um I grew up listening to that. They had the Paradox as well, which was going out. Yeah. Right? They were some of the dodgiest mixes I've ever heard in my life, if you can call them mixes. Yeah. But it, it, so it was always there. Um, a lot of people in other cities didn't have that. Yeah. We're lucky in Liverpool, we've got that music side to us. Yeah. Um, so I grew up around 
Me, like my mum and dad don't listen to dance music. My right. mum likes Earth, Wind and Fire, as you can see, I've just remixed September, <laughs> as because it was for her. And my dad likes David Bowie and Meatloaf. So for me, there was no. I I've got it from my sister. Yeah. My sister had like club kinetic tapes and stuff like that. First record I bought was Scott Brown. That was the time. Costume. Yes, yeah, so that was the first one. But then obviously, as I've got older and gone through school and. We grew up in a time where Scout's house was massive. Did you know what you were doing at nine with the deaths? No. No idea. Not a fucking clue. We had no YouTube, nothing like that. Um, there was no one to ask. It was a case of listening to tapes and stuff and trying to recreate what they'd done and trying to figure it out. Yeah. And that was all I had. Um, when, did the, when did the penny drop for you? Like, everyone's got that the moment. The penny you know. dropped when... Oh, God... I must have been 12, 13. It was a few years. Yeah. I must have been 12, 13, and I just thought... It come... I think it just come when I thought... Is that, that, like... I know that... I, it just sort of realise when you go... This is all very similar, this. Yeah. And I sort of get on to the time and that. It was probably a bit before then, but... I think as you grow older, you get a little bit wiser, don't you? Yeah. yeah and you start learning, and then... then like yeah at nine it was a case of having tapes and trying to figure out what they've done and re yeah. recreate what they've done and then you just sort of i don't know it just comes it doesn't just, it when, it just comes clicks, naturally clicks. i think yeah, 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 yeah. yeah i think it must have been so what type of stuff it's were you mixing i know you got the scott brown stuff so yeah so i had I, I bought my mum got a collection off the lad she bought them two decks off oh that's all right then. so when it was a little hardcore collection with a little bit of old school in there as well right so but then, I, as I say, though, that, that collection's very of its time for Liverpool. Like, yeah, all yeah, the young lads were bigger, in there, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was bigger. You had to throw them and all that over the water, yeah. didn't you? So, and then a little bit of old school as well, but it wasn't old school then, it was new. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but it's, it's like, obviously, I was listening to Paradox, Lee Butler's show, yeah. and Scouse House was massive as well. Right. So, um, it, I just loved it. It had me. It had right. me any sort of dance music just had me gripped. Where, where As you... I say, it's not a, it's it's not on that in my family. But any of your mates just went out like that, like Yeah, so I've got two mates um, from school, Craig and Mick. Craig's the addict, I don't know if you've seen him. Rance, he makes his own stuff. Right. Um Yeah, we were all bang into it, we all went to Tad together, we all yeah. grew up to obviously we went to school together. Yeah. Um But yeah, I was hooked, mate, when I, 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 I was hooked a lot more than them. You know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. I was going around record shops and that, trying to, when, trying to just walking into someone and just fucking going, I want this, and this is three of the words out of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, if that's all I can make out on a tape that's crackling its head off. Class, class. Yeah, I for example, Stu well, Allen, you know what I mean? mean? I was, I had a lot of Stu Allens. I've still got all the recordings on my computer. Of, I've got, I think I've got about 50 yeah. of his, his hardcore hour and his house hour. So it'll be a case of listening to them and going, where can I get that? And then obviously... With, with Butler and obviously we had Loose FM as well um, with the Scouse House stuff actually being played on the radio and the BCD so you've got an idea of I go into three beats and you're like Lee Butler's just played this and you, you know what the original song is they know obviously what you're it's all words well. and you know yeah, yeah so that, that's when, when did it me. become a bit funnelled so like obviously you've heard hardcore you've heard mm. old school you've heard sort of it like become funnel stuff. when I was in school I must have been 12 and, and then that was you it. Went it was the direction of Scouse, Scouse, full Scouse house. Um, but don't get young. You had like, I, I, see, I don't know what you class lock and low blow your mind. That's because I class that as Scouse house. Some people are class that as like bum bum house, wouldn't they? So maybe yeah. down that route was a little bit slower. But I, I see that it was that sort of era come now. I don't know with the club heads yeah. lock and low come and all that sort of stuff. To me, that that's Dutch stuff. That like. Just yeah. that personally, but for me, that's Scouse House. Yeah. For, but like Scout, I've seen people label Scouse House. I've seen like old piano tune. I've seen someone label. It's very varied Scouse yeah. House because it's, it's a mixture of what was played in the clubs, isn't it? Really, it's a mixture of Dutch house. There's a little bit of dance in there. There's some funky house <coughs> mixed into it. Then mm. you've got your like your thumping, like your BCD is pretty much Scouse House, isn't it? You're all. Mm. It's like a mixture of loads in it. And then a lot of it is like slow down hardcore comes into it. So the hardcore it's just slow down a bit yeah. and. I, I prefer Scouse that though. where there's a variety of stuff. Yeah, like, it's like personally. a mixture of everything in it, but... Yeah, but yeah it's like... Um, Sleep is Infinity, what would you class that as? I'd, I'd say sort of... That, that's Scouse House to me. I think, think 
trance euro trance or something like that do you that's know what I mean yeah. scouse to me that I, absolutely do you know what I mean I but that, that's how broad it is yeah but I mean it, it, it spanned off a lot didn't it mm. because there was like it spanned off a lot of little outshoots didn't it really yeah. yeah but it is it's a very wide mixture so when you're saying scouse you could be listening to it so and that's probably not like I'm having nothing to it's not scouse <laughs> you know what I mean it's, it's like it's 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 mad. Yeah. It's strange because it's like some of it. I call it goes out. It's, it's, it's just fucking trance. Yeah. With, with definitely... a little with a little tweak in it. Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a mad one. That, that, so when you you've decided, I think scouse house is just a phrase that the artist fucking style of music here. Yeah. yeah. What can we sell it as? And I think was it Les Calvert? I think Rob might have already said it was at Les Calvert who just needed a name for it and just put Scouse House at the top so when you looked in 3B yeah. to had a second it was Scouse and you, you knew what it was yeah. you knew it was the stuff that was being played in the old 5-1 maybe the pleasure rooms it was mostly the old 5-1 really because it, it was like whatever Butler was playing was big yeah because he had everything but as I've come later to find out a lot of that stuff Butler was playing just come from John Cotton anyway yeah it was literally it, the grandfather of it all <laughs> to be honest really really rare John Cotton is a yeah, yeah, f- really really it, is, yeah, f- it seems f- to be fantastic nobody knows him outside of Liverpool though, eh? like not, not nobody he brought that sound here didn't he but the thing it's is like, you know I, I mean? only there's, discovered there's, there's him a lot to via that. Liverpool like mm-hmm. um, and up my way like if you no put him on up your way probably no one no, home, would nobody be. knows who he is right but then yeah. you play one of his mixes and they're like fuck me you know it yeah like you know it a lot of that style. stuff I like to play as well you know what I mean in my sets a lot of like I like to play a little bit of touch house in my sets anyway mm. um, so I just think it still works coincidentally on the way down I had a a, a, a John Cotton mix on from like 1998 uh, <sighs> and honestly it's like jealous <laughs> <laughs> but on the way down I just thought oh like I'm in the mood for that it's not so like, like cabin crew airport from back then and you're like Fucking hell, it's still, still half relevant now. It, it still works now. And you're like, fucking A lot of that's timeless, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, music these days is not going to have that status of what most, some of that, that the music back then. A lot we of it's now quite now. timeless, isn't it? it? It's too throwaway now to become timeless. We say that now, but the tunes that are big, like, th- this is how I see it. Like, in the late 90s, there was a lot of, uh, dodgy record companies who, who had uh, access to, to press so they were pressing loads of shit and then some some shit would filter through and it, yeah. it stayed relevant for so tell me lad I've bought fucking loads of it <laughs> but, but Th- then, thanks Rob fucking game <laughs> just fucking walking but, in and taking me money off me and giving me a bag of records that were absolutely fucking terrible but that's what I'm saying though <laughs> like to, for every 200 records that were out in the late 90s maybe one of them was good right mm. if that in that style yeah, and like now, we're saying it's not the same, but in twenty years' time, the, from from the year twenty twenty two, there might be five big records everyone remembers. Do you know Hope, what I'm coming hopefully from? Hopefully, though, hopefully, I, think, I, hope, I, I think hope it will. I do, hopefully, but maybe it's just me being old <laughs> as well. Honestly, because the way I think, you everyone. I've said this before as well. Everyone is always the always. Uh, lean towards the coming of age music so when you were growing up Scouse, Scouse right Scouse was but, massive but when, yeah. when your dad was growing up for me. I don't know your dad by the way but when your dad was growing up yeah he was listening to that yeah. yeah and you always you might well, what's my dad 60 so yeah, yeah. So you can, you can yeah. appreciate um, new music I, I listen to new house music and I'm like yeah well, that's cool that's cool I listen to new new bounce music I listen to it and think can I go and get that bell off from somewhere <laughs> yeah. but like and then some some competes me too. Already done it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then the like, amount of had like, oh, it's gonna do all right, Dan. It's fucking seven mixes off I come out. But then I find myself still list going back to the music I when I came of age when I was like sort of I don't know fourteen to eighteen mm-hmm. when I when when I was sort of growing up discovering new music and that I still find myself going back to BC, listen to BCD stuff because I grew up on it. So I go back who's and I to put say? TJ Quicksilver Bellissimer on because class. it just reminds me of like we might be coming up from junior school. Yeah, class. Own, like, nah, boss. But the thing is though, like, who's to say that the lads who are like eighteen year old now in twenty years are not listening to an ADF yeah. tune or, or go, a go, going back to something yeah. they've picked up? It's like, up. oh, I remember yeah. when we listened to this when we first started going out? 
it's the memory that's attached to it. So I'm you got not... people like us still go. I remember that when it was fucking first made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so never say never. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I hope it does become like that. But yeah. maybe, maybe we just have to just gotta wait and see. With you that never know. I might just end up being Fisher, like or something like that, like a Fisher tune where it's like <sighs> because the a memory is attached. Like remember this from yeah, Greenfield. That's it. Yeah, like, that's uh, what it is. Like it, there's a lot of there's a lot of music, and I think I've had a, I've had a verdict when a few first going out. Um, and you've you've just you've just you've latched onto it and what if just that's a Gary at the time like, <laughs> that was fucking bossed that yeah but that's, that's like the world's worst fucking song as well <laughs> ah, that's fucking bossed that I've just got that it. memory on it yeah yeah but mm. as I say so I can remember my I can remember my I can remember coming up when we first got in what song was playing it was, it was John the Dentist such a feeling it was in the old five one class tune I can remember it class tune yeah so but there you go like you've yeah. attached onto that. Right. It's a good track, that though, anyway, isn't it? No, yeah, <laughs> no but you say that, you say that. Fucking great know, track. I think it's a great track. But who's to say, what year was that? Oh, fucking hell, 2003, 2002. Right. I don't know, what's a blur. Hey, who's to say that wasn't people that's sort of our generation, our, our age now? Listening to something I was at that same that, that going, Like, oh, this music's just going to be throwaway. This, this, this is just one of the new tunes. It's not as good as it as it was in ninety six. Yeah, not as good as it was in ninety three. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then true. now we're looking at looking at John the Dentist feeling with fond memories. Like it's just how yeah. I think it's how the brain works now, generations come through. I honestly I genuinely think that twenty years down the line, or even fifteen years down the line, these tunes will become classics. I'm not saying every tune will, as I say, maybe one in two hundreds are classic. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I hope so. Yeah. Really do. Well, if, if you go on, on logic like that, and it's got to, hasn't it? It, it does. You've got it's that like little bit in your brain and you make the lot of that just remembers pleasures. So if you have got that memory stored to it, exactly. and if it has been that big track in Greenfields and there's 50,000 people listening to it, then you think it'll yeah. stick. And I remember that time I dropped my first Gary at Greenfields and that tune was on. And yeah. it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be like, yeah, I heard this tune when I came of age, first time going to a festival, First time seeing such a big production scale thing. Mm. It's one of them things. Just hopefully, our music becomes relevant when all these young ones go to say Reminisce Festival and they go, first time I heard fucking had our brothers you know, and sisters. You know what gets me about it though? Like, it's a Scouse House is like, bounce it. It's, got, it's seen in a bad light by a lot of people. And it is. Certainly, yeah. Yeah. As well. Yeah. You look at that fucking bounce tent and Reminisce. It's round. Class. But you look at, like, even Lee, Lee Butler finishes that set off and usually finish it off with, like, Get a Life, You Drug Addicts, You're Shining, and, mm. and uh, Love Shy. Everyone fucking loves it. But it's seen in a bad light. I just don't yeah. think people want to admit it anymore. I really don't. <laughs> I think it's because it's not seen as, especially it's not seen as cool. Mm. I said, it couldn't I be said any further away from days cool, ago. to be honest. When I was it, it's through. Hard. Bounce music wasn't cool. If you listen to bounce music, right, mm. you were class in my area. You were classed as like a chav or yeah, don't get that. Yeah, yeah, a, little scally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Three me. And the the same people who, who who painted you with that brush, right? Now I see them at the raves, and it's like, oh yeah, it's cool music now though because like someone's it's playing. Trend. Yeah, it's coming a trend. There was a like thing that. is, for example, the pleasure rooms. Um, I pretty much grew up in there, so yeah. the pleasure rooms. It had that. It had that stigma on it. Yeah. Um, little den. That sounds bang bang music on it. Yeah. And automatically, it's got that association with having trouble. I guarantee you now, there's more fights outside fucking where the spoons than what there was in there <laughs> for the simple reason of drugs. Yeah. Ecstasy. Because when I first started going to pleasure rooms, it didn't sell ale. There was no 24 hour. It, it, was, it yeah. opened at 2 and it was on till 6. There was no ale sold in there. It was just drugs. But there was no, there was no, there was very rarely trouble in there. Because yeah. people were there for one reason. And it was that style of music. Yeah. Just have a good time. But you go to Lloyd's or the Weatherspoons or something like that. Kick offs. Yeah, because people have too much ale and the Yeah, just, just kick offs there. Yeah, and they like, might see 20 fights on a Saturday night. Yeah. But the pleasure room, you. You were lucky if you see him on a month. If that, once every yeah. few months, you might have a little kick-off outside at six in the morning. So, so I will move forward now yeah. um, in, in, into your thing. We've got, we got sidetracked. Yeah, so now. yeah, I had a set of decks when I was nine, yeah. And, yeah, and, and you've, just, you've got, no, you've just, you went down the full of I went down the full of the scouts' houses and got into school, yeah, because so, it was obviously... 
were you were you DJing in front of anyone? Were you doing so? I was doing like parties and stuff. Um, mates, school parties, mates yeah, parties, just like parties that. and stuff. I remember. I don't really remember a lot from there, but yeah, I was doing like house parties and that. Yeah, um, I wasn't very good. Right. Doesn't matter. Music was good, and that's all that matters. Because who really cares? Okay. Um, were, you, were you playing good tunes? Playing whenever was there. To be honest, um, right. it's very varied. Um, yeah. So your actually your mixing wasn't great, but I was, but only, your a kid, I was only a was kid. Right. You know, only, I was getting there. I was slowly. I had to right. say, you keep playing, and I had, I had no one to learn off. Yeah. So as I say, I was still just. Just out there on your own. Right. Um, so I was doing house parties and that, just with lads and girls and everyone else. Yeah. And I think it come to my first time of actually playing to people who weren't friends or friends of friends. So oh. I'd done my work experience in a bar in town called the Pickets. It was like a well, it was, it was a, like a little club, and um, they had this thing called the Dry Bar. It was under the under 18s obviously. It's right. the name Dry Bar, and there was a trailer on Nice Lane Farm. And um, he just had a set of technics. He went to want to play it. I was, just, I was playing Dong to Gots. <laughs> so, what? yeah, it was a bit nuts. Um, didn't go down very well. And then the same thing, he went, we're going to move it inside the in, inside the club. And I went sad. And um, as my work experience was just doing like posting in a dog's body work and that. And no, just seeing, seeing behind the scenes and that. It wasn't. It's a nice way to get I think it was just a way to get out of school and not have to fucking do for all for two weeks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just walk around with posters and that. Um, but he put me on in there. But I think in its achievements, if you can go and there's all bands on and I can turn up and play fucking Donk and Scouse House yeah. and actually having some goths dancing and especially when they're sober as well. Yeah. That's an achievement within itself. Wow. Because they did with the guitars and it's all fucking big my tattoos and I know. it was it was it was weird. Sort of off but, subject. It's it's one of these things while you're onto it. When 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 I was younger, we used to have under eighteen nights mm. in in that, in Whitehaven, our local town. Yeah, yeah. In the in the what was it? The Civic Hall, so like like thing, and. Uh, what I remember it was like alternate and weekends so on the Saturday night one weekend you'd have dance music I think it was called uh, Ibiza Mania I only went yeah. to one of them um, and you'd have like a bit of everything do you know what I mean you'd have mm. like trance and you'd have a bit of bounce music and what not right and then the alternate and weekend of the month it was it was goth night they used to call it goth night yeah right? it's it it <laughs> and two different completely def different demographics were like you went outside goth night you think what the fuck's going on here <laughs> same as if you went out no but this is the crack same crack you, if you went out on the on the dance night right you see your loads of young kids absolute off the nuts like i can remember it just so clearly and it was it's like you said there was no clashing of that but you playing Scouse music to like goths, it's like. Ooh. I mean, I mean, some of them were dancing, so it's done my job. I mean, a good tune's a good tune, isn't it? Regardless. Yeah. A good you don't like it, though. Good <laughs> you don't like that style. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, couldn't have been any further away from that yeah. day, though. But that's just experience that, innit? Then I, I, um, round about that time, no, no, it was a bit later, I must have been 18, and I went to the. Obviously, I partied in the pleasure room, so yeah. I'll. I, um, that that was where I went. Oh, five one pleasure rooms. Oh, five one closed down. I just went to pleasure rooms, and it was. So I, where did you I go first out that. of all of these? Or? Out of the the first club I went to, like prop. Well, th there was always bars around town, so I'd already been getting into the bars and that. My first actual experience was the old five one. Right. So I, I can you remember going I'm, the first time and and what was played and stuff like that? Can you remember going in and seeing what DJ was on? Obviously, yeah. being a DJ yourself, like at the time. Yeah, do you know what? Yeah, I do actually. Because remember the first time going, they had a little corner in the old five one, and they played like. No, it wasn't. It was before then they were playing. It was like it was warmed up with funky house music. I think yeah. by John Tomo, who right. coincidentally was in same school as me. Right. I'm um, just trying he was to get, a year above, so it was like. What year was yeah. this? Was this pre-decorating? Because they moved it around a bit. If I'm pre-decorating, like, um, like, yeah. So they had like, the little funky boxing on the corner, didn't they? So it was be. I've never been to a five one. Yeah. So you're looking to. 2003. It was right. coming to the end. I think it closed down 2005 because there was trouble. Right. Um, so in 2003, I only had the last few years. I probably missed the best years of that club. Right. Um, but I can't do nothing about that. See, I, so I yeah, it was all five one, and then the pleasure rooms. But you had all the other bars like 
Well, he's in a fucking in the arena and everywhere at that time was playing Scouse House. Yeah. Um, besides the odd few places that were playing like House or Funky House, most bars played Scouse House. Can you remember you know the first I mean? DJ you met? Like, like where it's like, oh. The first DJ I met. <laughs> I know it sounds, it sounds stupid saying it, but like. Yeah, I, I can't for this reason is the first DJ I met was Mark Simon. Because right. I had a tape in hand and I walked into the old far front office and gave it in. And he walked back out and went, that's fucking terrible. <laughs> what are you doing? Great. That's the first DJ I met. And, and I met him in the summer. And I don't know what he didn't have a fucking clue, but I'll never forget that. Yeah. I was a kid. Mental, eh? Yeah, well, didn't even talk to me. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, the music's where it's full of rejection, isn't it? You've got to get over that very, very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah, it's like, get used to disappointment. Yeah, like, It's absolutely. all right for me. I support Everton. I'm a fucking crap. So Everton. I'm used to disappointment. That's part Everton, mate, as well. No, yeah, so you're used to disappointment, yeah. aren't you? So to, it, it's a life lesson there very early. It's, it's... But you need, I mean, for anyone who's going to come in and do this... It's, do you know you, when Unless you, that's just my experience of it so far because I'm doing something wrong. But when you create art, that, though, like you're you're you're, mm. you're putting your your every your ideas like projecting what's in your brain onto into a track, mm. and you've you've got that um, emotional attachment to it. Yeah. And then for someone to reject it, it can be quite fucking. It's hard to yeah, take. Yeah, it's hard yeah, to take. It's really I love is criticism, hard to take. but but like it, sometimes it's still it, hard yeah. to listen to. Yeah. Uh, is that, I think that that's could be human though, isn't it? No one, no one likes rejection, do they, really? But rejection though, like, there's rejection of like, <clears throat> you send it to somebody and they've, they've like, oh, well, I'll give you feedback or whatever. And they go, shite. That's, that's not feedback. That's, that's, it's, oh, it might be shite, but tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me what you don't shit. like about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think there needs oh, to be more Because, like I mean, that. I've had someone gone, shite that, and then it's come down and I've actually spoken to them. They've just not liked a little bit in the middle. Because you like the whole track shite because of this one little tiny bit in the middle. Why don't you just say, have a look at the bit in the middle? Exactly. Like, do, 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 that doesn't really work for me. Yeah. yeah Since but starting you, this podcast. You sort of get used to it, don't you, in the end? Yeah. Since starting this podcast, it's been... Because uh, obviously we talk about production, we talk about music and stuff like that. People have obviously watched the podcast and got on to me and said, I've seen you were talking about whatever subject it was at the mm. time i i do this style as well would, would you would you check it out and i always i make sure i reply to everyone it might not be straight away but I, if, if someone says can you check your track out and the 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 pleasant about it because at the same time i've had people just drop me a soundcloud link and they've like i've well, talked about this in the past oh, i don't well. read it i don't, I don't click it, it. i don't yeah. read it but if someone takes the time to say can you do me a favor yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse, or excuse me yeah, yeah. Just ne never spoke to you but can you have a listen to this for me yeah. i'll right. click it and i'll, and I'll, I'll obviously well, listen but that yeah for me i've always always, always always listened to people's music um back who've asked because i remember when i was sort of like starting out and people would just like fob you off just shite and it's like how, how are you meant to learn if i've no got one... a very good mate who's very good at doing that yeah it's rob <laughs> so you're to shit that lad starts again and you're like oh for fuck's sake yeah oh, yeah so i've got the, the ultimate person who doesn't get it doesn't any say he just goes and fuck crap but that, that's the thing. But though, that, like... that, that, that's him, innit? I'm lucky I've got that because a lot of people don't have that, really. Yeah. Um, a lot of people just have people who can't fucking boss that, but they don't actually know what they're listening for. Yeah. So exactly. automatically it's good because, oh, like, you know what? Because you put time and effort in, and it is time and effort. Exactly. Like, it's a lot of wasted hours sat in front looking at that fucking laptop. The, the like thing this. is, though, I've got this thing where I, I if I criticise someone's music, I'll tell, I'll tell them what. I like and dislike. So yeah, yeah. if I like something about your music and I, and I think it's a shite tune, I'll look for something. And if there is nothing, I'll say, listen, mate, like you're it's sort of in the wrong direction here. Yeah. It's um, just not for me, this. Yeah. But I will I will actively look for pros and cons to both, whether it's a production, whether it's the, the writing of the music, whether it's a structure. Like, I, I always, always try and give feedback because I myself was that one person who just reached out to somebody before and said can i have some feedback and i got fucked off so it's like something simple as come someone coming back to you and you know what you're kicking bass sound boss but the riff doesn't yeah exactly but the riff's not powerful <clears throat> enough to to go with it because they're just so much yeah. I don't know you're kicking bases, obviously, the base of your track but you've still got to match it haven't you yeah you've still got to bring everything up to that level but um 
sometimes just simple things like that so they're just going oh, shit see you later <laughs> exactly yeah but um, I just want to get move forward and stuff cool. like that. Um, so we've got dead sides back there. <laughs> so no, it's not. It's not no, 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 no. Yes. I just uh, don't want to think I'm boring people with my voice and that. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I've, I'm so dead like, conscious. I've got a monologue. I don't know. Voice. You made such nice to hear you yeah, as well. <laughs> so I, I only know Facebook, Brad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's nice to get to know you as well. Uh, yeah. And you only hear little bits on the podcast, don't you? And I've, I've listened to them all. Yeah. It's something I listen to because I. See, I'll be driving hard in the car. So that's what I'm using. I prefer to just put a podcast on. Well, that's the thing. Like, it's just the, it's just easy to listen. The amount of I mean. people last week who messaged me because we didn't, I didn't bring a podcast out on the Friday. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we'd, what I explained before, um, they're like Friday's ruined. What, what's going? On? This is uh, this is part of my routine. You ruined my routine again. <laughs> and it's like I, I try as hard as I can to, to to get it. So another thing I'll just sort of step into here is I'm going on holiday in January for three weeks. But I'm going to try over the Christmas period to make sure you're still going to get an episode every Friday. That's another, that's another thing. Oh, boss. And Commit like, with that. Yeah, well, I, the thing is, I put time and effort into this and I don't want people to think that, like... You've given up with it. Yeah, and, and and to be honest, I love doing this. I love, like... I have I would have had no reason just to drive down to Liverpool today and just to meet you. For Like, there's no reason that would happen. So this podcast, I get to know you on a personal level and... There. I've walked away today with a new friend. You know what I mean? It's like, like that's the way I look at it. Like somebody who's on the same wavelength. Because I could go and talk to somebody in the street about the, this, what, what I do here, and it's like I'm not interested in fucking dance music. Fuck off. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's like yeah. you talk to somebody who's you're a producer. Not, not everyone who comes on is a producer, but you're a producer. We talk about producer shit. Talk about events. Can talk about DJing. Can talk about like growing up listening to the music. It's like it's just one of them things that that this gets me to talk to people who are like-minded. That's that's simply what this is about. Um, and like I say, sort of moving forward, I want to make sure it's every Friday. And I have been let down in the past off guests and stuff like that, but I've always tried to... Replace it as quick replace as replace it, it right. yeah. So, so this is unexpected for me, like, so... <laughs> yeah, this, is just, this is just Christmas shopping. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, it's just, yeah. I thought... Because I have got a list of people I do want to come on, and you're on the list... I thought, I'm going but it just wasn't this high up the list. No, no, no. I'm going <laughs> no, down but to it shows if you're here, here, and it makes sense mm-hmm. to to get something done while you're here. So, if you really want to be tapes and on them shops, really? Nah, do I fuck <laughs> exactly? Uh, no, but the, no. The, the thing the thing is though, um, I I I've I've got like uh, I'm dead OCD with it. The thing is with the podcast, so I've got. Um, if I go to this area for whatever reason, so I've got mm. I travel quite a lot with work as well. That so, wasn't against you. I just know that's all I told them in a minute. Uh, <laughs> so nice. But um, the thing is, it's like uh, there's people in Liverpool I want to talk to. So mm. I've made a little list of Liverpool DJs or, or promoters or MCs. There's uh, people in say I don't know Preston that I want to talk about mm. Preston, uh, Birmingham, North East. A lot of people say why haven't I talked to people over the North East? North East, yeah. Um, I think I've only had one from the North East on and that was Ben Rushin mm. and it was like I haven't had a reason to be over there just yet so yeah I'm trying to say, to, if you weren't Christmas you. shopping here you'd have been somewhere else wouldn't you yeah. Suppose, yeah so so what I'm trying to say is so when I seen the, uh, or she says to me about oh yeah we'll go down to, to I just need to grab some bits and bobs for, for Christmas I was like right Liverpool and I'm like right so I've got shortlisted names I want and I messaged you uh, and as I say we just organised it last minute um, I try and get a, a podcast recording every Friday. That's what I do. Um, obviously, we're on a Sunday, so this mm-hmm. is, was unplanned. But I'm glad we've sort of done it. Do you know what I mean? I'll always go out my way if something mm-hmm. needs to happen. Then obviously, yeah. we did, there was no way for us to do. It. I know you normally just go and see someone in, yeah, in, the, com- yeah, yeah. in the comforts of their own home, but obviously mm-hmm. that was impossible for me with um, was my dad's birthday and the kids around. So <laughs> it's just absolutely nothing's going to happen. And that <coughs> the day besides be all chaos. So why not just come and book this and get it done anyway? And it gives me some time away. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll get back onto your story. Um, sort of got sidetracked there. Yeah. A lot of people like to know what goes on behind the scenes because that I don't know why people are just interested in it. Like I get messages like, "How come this didn't not, happen?" Oh, not everything uh, runs smooth, does it? Yeah, That's nah, life, nah. though, isn't it? You know what I mean? I try and control it as much as I can, but sometimes you don't have the control of other yeah. people. So it's the, it's that's how it works. But yes, yeah, so so you you've been going out to sort of yeah, all five one pleasure room. Yeah, so I was clubbing and I got to it must have been eight, eighteen, and I could already mix. Don't get me wrong, I could already mix, um, and I went to 
the pleasure rooms DJ school at all. I, I, I didn't even know. I was, was at, I was at, I was at a point where I thought, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I know what I'm doing, and I need to try to sort of meet someone, or some something needs to happen, here and I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Me mates and me mates, but they just like party on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it is. It's like. I thought I needed to meet someone and I didn't know who the teacher was and luckily enough for me it was Rob. Yeah. Um so it was Rob Kane. I went there. What year was this, sorry? Must have been <laughs> Sorry for that. Um we just had Paul the H come in just <laughs> randomly, but um yeah, um possible future guest maybe. But we're getting into your story there. You might be able to hear Paul talk in the background on this, but um He's all right, Paul Sand. A little sad. cameo, why not? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, we got to you, you DJ and meeting Rob. Uh, yeah, what, so I, I went. What so yeah, I must have been eighteen. So it must have been two thousand four. Right. I don't know my numbers are everywhere. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think I was a DJ. Would you? Time and of a can't fucking count. So they, you were getting. Yeah, into I was it. eighteen, mate. So you're looking two thousand and I don't know two thousand and something. Right. Left school in 2002, so it was 16, must have been 2005, 2006, then must have been a bit later than that. Right. And I thought, you know what, I need to do something, I need to meet someone. Now, I didn't know he was in teaching that, but obviously it, it was Rob. Yeah. And he basically said, you can already mix, why have you come here? And I said, well, I've paid for fucking 10 hours now, so I'm going to use them. <laughs> and then after that very first lesson, I dropped him off at home and he went, what are you doing the weekend? I said, nothing. He went, do you want to take me? And ever since... I must have known them not now, so it's gonna be 16, 17 years I've known Rob now, yeah. and ever since then I've told them to, to gigs. Oh, you've been his driver, have you? I've been his driver, yeah. I so might there's have loads you, of you places know, we've been, past. but there was a little bit of time off. I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've had loads of people, well, obviously everyone doesn't have had me trouble with addiction and stuff, so yeah. there's been little gaps in between, but that that's life. I could have met you and just not realised, mate. I'm, I apologise. Yeah, <laughs> I've had the same thing, like I've been. I've been to loads of Kenty's gigs and just not realised it was Kenty because I didn't know him. Mm. Didn't have a reason to know him at that time. Yeah. Um, it was just one of them. You, you, you sort of recognise faces and you, you bump into people, but you don't know if you're ever going to bump <laughs> into them again, do you? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I met Rob there and ever since I've been... I class yeah. him as a dead good mate. He's so like I, I, I love him. so boss. were you getting gigs after that or what was that? no so eventually yeah i did i become a poster boy for the pleasure rooms yeah. in 2010 and he gave me a gig on the back of it and then i was in there for a few months um on a, on a saturday friday it was either a friday or a saturday it yeah, swapped yeah. depending on what was going on so pretty much residents in there for about or five six months like yeah. that and then i went to rehab then yeah. that that just comes into part of me the rest of my life story uh, but it closed down anyway right. it sort of scouts was coming to the end it, it yeah. took that massive dip didn't it yeah and especially here in liverpool the yeah. house the house come out the funky house the house music and all that just yeah. come it come in massively Right. Big and the pleasure rooms just died off that scouts house and died in town like at one point there was only the pleasure rooms playing Scouse House, Bounce, Donk, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, there was only them playing it. So, so that sort off. of thing. So, maybe this is why That's I That's where we're talking with the circles, yeah. the music coming out. No one did. No one knew me uh, back then. Mm. It was just one of them things. I just... So when, when it's just like an achievement for me, knowing that I used to party in there, looking up at the likes of Rob. Yeah. And like, see, for me going there, I, that looks gay. Yeah. To listen to every weekend. Some people yeah. only got that at like events. We had that every weekend. How yeah. lucky were we? Like, you look at that lineup we had. We had, like, Rob, Chris Henley, Redman, yeah. both of them. Um, they had Butler for a bit, Carlos Lee, um, obviously, Carl who ran here. We had yeah. Alex Kay, Outsource. Yeah. Um, Steve Cocky was there as well. Cocky right? was there as well. Um, do you know what I mean? And then you're like, MCs, you had, like, you had Ben. Well, obviously, we've just had Paul who come ah, in. Yeah, who's yeah. like, Mr. Dance, have you been out lately himself yeah. there? And then obviously yeah. MCB, Jeff, MC. Yeah. We had Bubbler as well. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it, it was a pretty stacked Finchy lineup. Finchy was in there for a while. For a while, yeah. Yeah. So it's a pretty stacked lineup, really, isn't it? There's always, yeah. I mean, I literally grew up listening to Ultra Beat. Yeah. Before they were fucking Ultra Beat. <laughs> I was listening to Ultra Beat before they were, Mentally while they were still getting going, do you know what I mean? And uh, so there was always. 
So, yeah, don't be lucky in that sense and what we actually had in there. There's a lot yeah. of people just see a little fucking drug then. Yeah. And it was. But so, for, for you, this is where there was a gap. Where, where yeah, you... I, I went to rehab, so I've done like six months there. Yeah. A little bit longer. I come out um, drug free for a bit. I've ended up obviously back on drugs since then. I'm, I'm not now. I'm, yeah. I'm nearly four years off them now, so. Um, so yeah, there's been times in between I done no DJ and I was just doing like little parties and that. Mm. I wasn't my head wasn't there because once once I go fully into that, once I go fully into the drug take them all down fully in. Yeah. There's no there's no middle ground with me. I'm either in or I'm out. Yeah. It's all or nothing. So it was I move on a bit, so just to get up to like the production bit. So yeah, I was in and out just doing parties and stuff, just going to work and just yeah. doing bog standard daily things that I needed to do. Um, what year did you dip your toe back in then, like properly? Um, just before lockdown. So, 2019. Yeah, to start, so the start of 2020, I got drug free, um, got myself off the limo, um, cocaine, whatever, yeah. whatever anyone calls it. So, got myself off the limo, and then. I've always been made to it, Robin. I've always gone to gigs and stuff, no matter what that may be. And he said, like, I'm, I'm teaching in mode. So I didn't know what it was. He went, come down, have a look. I went sound and I walked in there and he introduced me to Debbie, who runs it. And um, a week later, it was started. Yeah. <laughs> so like, so what did you this go is to where I for? need. This is where I need to be, this. It was music production. Um, Do you find with addiction, um, I've never suffered from any heavy addiction, so, mm. um, or okay. anything like that. I've, I, I had a, uh, I sound like a fucking dick, but I had, a, I had an energy drink addiction. Um, it's not, it's not. Got loads of people who have got one of them, me. Right. Okay, now. But like, I not was. Good for you, then. I, 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 I got to the point where I was lying to people about it. Like, that sounds stupid because it's. No, it doesn't drink. at all. So I used to go and work on a night shift and mm. drink. 12 monsters so i get i get three four packs of monsters 12 of them in a night shift and it i'd go up. and it was only when i was i went to the hospital i can't remember what it was for and a woman said to me she was like you have to cut off them and i'm like yeah yeah whatever everyone's ever always says it because i was always known to have like a, an energy can a little coffee you know what i mean but like it was one of them things how mad then, is it when you put it down and you get that little voice come why have you put me down <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that. yeah but then <laughs> i teach people about that now that's what my full-time job is so when yeah. i say I'm concentrating on my work that's what i help people with addiction so yeah. um that little voice in your head that just keeps fucking egging you on all the time i did teach people how to silence that yeah like obviously where it comes from within the brain and, and how to silence it <laughs> yeah but it doesn't matter what it is does it like do, do you know uh, how, we, how, we, how i found out though like with energy drinks i was sitting there and I'm, like my skin went green like it sounds stupid it doesn't surprise me at all but like the, the skin well, pigments well, all up my arm and everything mm. i was like getting green was it monster by any chance uh, what, I, Typical, or well, you I just, saw, I just like whatever. Proper, proper smack it when I say it, but any, <laughs> anything. That's like, uh, you know what, what it is. But yeah, so I was. would be the first person to, to to come in with that. But the the, <laughs> the, the thing is, though, you, honestly, you wouldn't believe this. So the woman was saying to I was got the I think, crash off. That must have been horrible. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. Wow. So I was in. So I went from that, mm -hmm. and she said, "You're gonna have to stop this. You, you'll be. You, this will fuck you." Like because it was like, I was getting to the point where I was drinking it. I could neck a full one and go to bed, go to sleep without any. You, I could, do that, I could do that after having that. And you could literally put a gram in front of me and I'd do the gram in one. Yeah. And I could literally put me on the pillow and go to that's, sleep. That, that's what it was. That's, it's it's, it's and not she, fun, is it? She says to me, she says, um, she, uh, what was it she said? She says, you're going to have to come off these just totally. She says, you, you're going to feel it. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to feel it off energy drinks. Because like, like, she was talking to me as if I was, I was taking cocaine. And it was like, she, no, she says, really, you, you'll feel it. And I was like, whatever. Yeah, the so then, and the crash off, right, that's horrible. I, went, I, I got home. <laughs> I, I, was in, I was in hospital overnight mm. and I got out in the morning and I hadn't had any at this point. And I went home and I thought, oh, I'm tired, I'm tired here. Like, put my head on the pillar and I slept for like two days. And then when I tried to get out of bed, I couldn't get my head off the pillar. I, was, I had no energy. My, my body must have just been running off it mm. in like autopilot. Yeah, yeah. And it took crazy amounts of sugar that as well, and it took it took four days to think. By the by, the last of fourth, that's when like the cold sweats and everything stopped. And to be honest with you, I've I, I can go back and have one it's now. Mad having a rattle off them, innit? 
because that's what it is. It's, yeah. a, it's a full rattle, isn't it? I was shaking it's and everything. It was rattle, fucking yeah. crazy. Like, <laughs> you uh, might as well have been on the key, lads, and see that. That's what it was. Yeah, it felt like I was thing. there. It's, it's, it's just pure with I've never, I've never caffeine took, and sugar. I've never took crackers. Like, um, illegal drugs or anything like that. Like, I've took, I smoke weed in, in Amsterdam and shit, but like. Yeah, being um, on that. Yeah, but it's one of them things, mate. It's like, I've never, ever. Um, so I don't know what a come down feels like, so to say. Yeah. So I, I I picture it, it's like that. And if it's like that, drugs down for me, because I honestly, I was dead to the world for days. I was um I, I was I was that far listening to that little voice that I never had to come down because it just fucking didn't stop. <laughs> just, <laughs> plain plain and simple, it just didn't stop. So well, I never felt like that, I just fucking cracked on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until I couldn't go anymore and I eventually Right. So crashed, so you said yeah, you started going into the the mode thing so, so yeah so started in, I started in mode in the January didn't know lockdown was coming I don't think any of us did back yeah. then um, did you pick it up quickly I'd never seen anything before but because of obviously been listening to music and DJing for you know, obviously that though. long um, it's when you said before you said oh you, you can tell these sound similar and yeah you, you can, can pick, pick it up, up in the time and stuff yeah. you eventually learn time and don't you yeah and so I knew how Slacks were structured, I knew what happened here, what happened there, I knew like the breakdowns come here and I knew how a track obviously was laid out. But um When did you get to the the how long did it take from starting that in the January to where you thought I could release a track? How long did that take? Six months, maybe. It's January February. Yeah, six, seven months. Right. But I, uh, the team I had behind me was so I've had Rob Kane. Yeah. There's there's a fella there called Mike Chatterton, the Chatter, who I've done some stuff with. He um, is the, right. Rob, Rob spoken with him he on the podcast. He is the most underrated music producer. He said that as well. Ever. He said that as well. I. Said underrated. I'll use his words. Well he's so talented, that man. Yeah. Um, there's nothing he can't do. Right. Um, I just wish Mike, if you're watching this, fucking push yourself and do <laughs> some more. Um, he's so underrated; it's unbelievable. Rob did say that. I've he's not he's behind him. so many people that you wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, so, but he does a lot of like teaching, yeah. obviously hosting and stuff like that. So you, you just I just wish he, I wish he put himself yeah, in yeah. the front, because if he did, there, there's your next big producer yeah. right there. there there's, there's the knowledge he's got is unbelievable. And the, Rob, Rob's knowledge is mega around music. Yeah. Mike's not far behind him. Is it? Is it but his production cooking? skills are... If, like, if Mike and... If Les and Rob get stuck, they go to Mike. You know what I mean? Yeah, Even yeah, though yeah. them two know what they're doing and they're very good at what they do, they, yeah. they'll go to Mike because he's, 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 he's on another level, that fella. So, like, for, for me, Rob, it'd be, it'd be good to have, like... If it was like uh, there's a good mix kid in that room you see because you've got Mike who does everything yeah you've got Rob who is known for Scouse House and it, 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 it's now house isn't it because yeah. it's doing things house and tech and stuff but but as a DJ but then you've good... got Les who is yeah. an house DJ like Garland Society and yeah. and all that so you've got a very wide wide range and group of people teaching in there as well um, really but I've had them three supporting me on yeah. that journey it's a good, through modes. Good, good um, supportive background as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad to have, like... I mean, I learnt music in there, but I, I got a lot of confidence from it as well. I learnt, yeah. I learnt a lot more than just music while I was there, so you're like... That's what I was saying. One of my downfalls yeah. is networking, but it's the one thing that Les also you've got to do. You're like, fucking... Yeah. Les, when you've been there, I've been in my life, and you're just, fucking... Like, you're like, oh... One but I know I've got to do it. Yeah, having like to... conversations with Robin. That one thing, he'd, if if I was coming up, he'd he'd be the the, the I, he, I'd love to just follow his shadow of like of because you could go out on a on an, an event with him or follow a, follow a day in his life and even production. <laughs> and, no, like do you know what I mean? One of the most stressful days you've ever had. No, but like, and then you go and watch him DJ, and he'd show you just little things that that's not taught. Like I I went into that uh, that aura when he was playing um, mm -hmm. playing like house music and. That. And just the way he mixes and the way he mixes the way house it, like he mixes his scouse though, doesn't he? It's yeah. rapid, isn't it? And then same, but then the same with like how he reads the crowd. It's stuff that's not, it's not worded. 
it's not taught worded. It's like you do this and you do this. It's like you can't teach look, experience, now's can right you? Time. Now's the right time. You can't now teach experience. Right. Yeah. You know, you can't. You, and, that, and that's what it is. It's just years and years of experience. It's trial and error and making mistakes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, when did you get your first gig? And and also off the back of that, when did you produce the first track that was good enough? And what was it? Um, so it was Bullets in the Gun that come out on acceleration. So thanks to Matthew Kemp for that because mm. he gave me me, me first chance at releasing stuff. So gotta thank him for that. Right. Um, and that was I'm gonna say the 28th of August in my mind. Might have been the week before. Yeah. Round about then, August twenty. Right. When was it? And what, what about a gig wise? Gig wise, my first gig was when we come out of lockdown. Was thanks to Paul. Right. Come in before, what so Paul like? awaits. I've had the support I've had from him. has been unbelievable. So um, he runs the events with a lad called Gary Bates. Yeah. Um, the support I've had from them has just been absolutely fantastic. Because the gigs are getting it through Paul you've and Gary, but so especially Paul. Paul's good network there, though. I like, knew what you've got. Coming. I knew Paul from the pleasure rooms, obviously, as being yeah. an MC like everyone else. And then, obviously, as I've got to know him, he's not that person he was 20 years ago with the mic in his hand yeah. being a fucking loud mouth kid. Yeah. It's not that, it's just not that person. Um, yeah, the support to get from, especially them two, and like that. I mean, I still call on Rob now, but Rob's been with me for God knows how many years. So mm. my, my little circle's good. It is very good, but it's a Liverpool-based circle. Yeah, it's not. It's a Liverpool-based circle, and it. But a lot of my gigs come here. Um, it'd be nice to go and play out of town a bit more often. Yeah, I think, like, obviously we're having, like, don't want to go and stand in the club. Fucking off the pallet in my head. Yeah. It's it's hard when you go it's different when you go somewhere sober. Yeah. It's a different experience. And um bevy people fucking annoy me now. I yeah. just look at people and I think quite oh, did I fucking used to be like that? Yeah. God. <laughs> so like, so like but I know weekend. at some point I've got to go and do that, otherwise I'm not gonna get anywhere. It's like, all right yeah. banging loads of tracks out and putting mixes on Sarah yeah. and that. I like think like if you what? don't go to them, they don't know you do they? No. Like, like I got, I got me chance, I got me first chance and pure was off Kenty again. Yeah. Um, and I've had other stuff in between off different people who have just got to know through like Facebook and stuff. Um, doing but, this podcast for me, right? I the amount of people who have talked to afterwards who I've been I've knew for years on the scene and, mm. and we've sort of crossed paths and stuff and they've went, You're uh, you're not a dickhead, eh? And I'm like Oh, 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 you're not a miserable cunt. I'm like, where, where'd, you get, where, where'd you get that from? Yeah, and it's he's like, been telling you that to start with. No, well, the thing is, though, Brilliant. I, I go to clubs and because I'm not there off my head, I, I look like I'm out, I look out of place. You stand out. Stand yeah. out. You so do, I'm standing yeah. there, I'm like, I'm, I'm observing the DJ or the MC that's on and I look like I'm not having a good time, but I, I am. I'm just sober. But then I can see why... It's a different it's experience. Took a while to, it's took a while to realise, though, why people thought I was like maybe an ignorant cunt or maybe like um, just like so you know when you've heard the same story four times off the same person it's fucking great isn't it <laughs> isn't it yeah oh, but God. I, 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 because I'm sort of observing I don't focus on what I'm doing so maybe I look miserable like, oh. <laughs> see I've had I, I've had bookings and you've been out of town so for anyone who has booked me so far mm. thank you very much for that yeah. um, it's all greatly appreciated but I've had bookings but I don't just turn up do my booking and go yeah. I'll always be there before and a little bit after so yeah. it's not like it, 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 it's a tough one but if you want to get on them gigs that you want you've got to go and you've got to go yeah, haven't yeah, you and, support, yeah. yeah it's it's hard for me everything's so fucking far away from me Everything's miles away, and it for yourself. And, yeah, it's even further for you, innit? Yeah. You know what I mean. But you, so you, you get where I'm coming from here. Is that? Yeah. Me, where I live and you, and you live is so far out that loop of where our music actually gets played. I don't know. I, like I said to you before, before this, I, think I know Wigan's not bigger. that far, but once you go Wigan, and yeah. then you start getting further on your Burnleys and that. But it's it's, it, it's, it's it's a bigger it's bigger than that. I think the the, the scene itself is so much bigger. I think it, it or, orientates a lot in Wigan because that's where the numbers on, are, isn't yeah. it? That's where the numbers are but, for for people who go. Look at like say the northeast at the minute, like. They're pulling huge numbers into their events. We we have good times. We have shit times in the northwest. You're like closer in, to there than me. <laughs> but what I'm saying I'm is, though, it's, it's just it's just one of them. It's like 
it, we've had this discussion. It's very clear as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm it not is, scared to say it. It yeah. is because if you've got a promoter and he's got all his mates and there's all his mates can DJ, why wouldn't yeah. he put all his mates on? Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? He's obviously going to go to all his mates on, isn't he? He's not going to look outside of that click to someone he doesn't know and yeah. just think, oh, well, I'll try him. When, you, when your you numbers start dwindling your on, on you know? your events and it's like... I'm what am I doing wrong? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what you need maybe, to look for. Maybe yeah, fresh but, names. but until that starts happening, it's not going to happen, is it? It's going to be the, yeah. it's going to be the same people who are there doing what they do. Yeah. Because that's just the way it is. It, it, it's hard to break into something like that, yeah. especially when you're not from that. Especially when you're not from them areas as well. I think to like I mean, but we probably have the same. Ah, yeah. Same problem when when you don't talk like them in that language. And you're not from that area, and you're not constantly there. Yeah. Because you're not the mate, if you know what I mean. It, get, it's get, hard yeah. to break into that, and that, that's what a lot of us are going to struggle with. Just. Especially me being from here. Yeah, just after talking to you for like this last few hours, um, I just want to ask you a question, just so I can sort of gauge it, but. Before the lights run off on here, do you mean? Oh, well, nah, well, nah, we've got. Oh, nah, we've right. still got. We've got a little bit of time the other day. I'll just say it off soon. Oh, do they? Is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah, anyways, yeah. I'll um, keep an eye on it, so I'm not a glory of just don't want them to go oh, off. No worries. Um, but basically, I want to ask you. What can I say? 051 or yeah. Wigan Pier? The 051. Pleasure Rooms yeah. becomes before both of them. That will, okay, I'll play, I'll play, Same so, sort of music, yeah. Pleasure Rooms and Wigan Pier. Yeah. Um, but, pleasure Rooms all day. Okay. Don't get me wrong, I've been to Wigan Pier and I've got but, a funny story about Wigan Pier. Because I know what comes in. So I remember taking it was Rob's birthday, flew him up, me, me Liam, and Rob goes up to Wigan Pier. He stood there, <laughs> this kid stood there. Rob at the time was scratching with trainees and yeah. that. <laughs> This kid stood there, he took this trainee off. I've never seen that like it. It was fucking awful. And he stood there, that Rob left him there for a full hour. Stood oh. there with one shoe on. I'll get it in a minute, I'll grab it in a minute. He just went, it's hard to finish me. <laughs> full hour. Oh, I, would not, dream, I would not have touched that. It was fucking awful. Like, oh. Class. I've seen better pasties and Greg's than that. <laughs> Honest mate, it was so bad. But he left him there for a full hour. Just open him up. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong, I've been to Wigan Pier. Yeah. Um, for me, right, and this is something that I notice is that 051 Pleasure Rooms, all the bars. Yeah. Even though they were playing Scouse House, now I think it might just be a Liverpool thing, is that you'll notice this. You say you've been out around Liverpool, haven't you? You know Liverpool, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So everyone's dressed up, aren't they? Everyone's in the best clubber. Nah, I know what you're gonna say. You go out and you go out and you go to Wigan Pier and they're in shorts and sackies and that. Yeah. Whereas yeah. you couldn't turn up to the pleasure rooms dressed like that. If Paul was still in here now, you couldn't turn up to the pleasure rooms the way you were dressed for Wigan Pier, even Absolutely. though the music was very similar. So I was going to them places thinking, what the fuck? Like yeah. I'm turning up dressed thinking. I feel out of place here. Yeah. And I think that that it took me a long time to get my head round that. It's that like I picture everywhere as being like here. Like everyone goes out Saturday night, they're all dressed up. Doesn't matter what music it is, everyone's nicely dressed up and they, they go out the bed and then you turn up to Wigan Pier and there's a bed and there with a fucking pair of shorts and fucking rock boards on and you just think, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, I think Fun. it took me a while to get my head around stuff like that. Is that not everywhere? Is, but, but yeah, exactly. You go the old fan, you go the pleasure room. Certainly, was a little drunk then. It was yeah. fucking boss. Yeah, but they all had decent clubber on. They all had the best clubber on. <laughs> yeah, and it's it, it, it's it's a strange thing. And you go out to town, like I go out to town, and it's not like that. Yeah. Um, but for me, right, and this is just my own personal opinion. For me, going like that. Doesn't help towards the name that the the, the, the name that the stigma that Absolutely, the music yeah. has on it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It, it, it actually gives because if you if you like, <laughs> what was it? The documentary. Yeah. I've if seen you that, took yeah. that, everyone who listened to that type of music was like that. Fuck me! It's that's why it's got the name it's got. Yeah. But it's not. It's not. Because like you that, I'm I'm in my taxi day, but it's Sunday. Yeah. But if it was to go out, I'm gonna go out looking smart. Yeah. Because that's the way of being brought. Yeah. I just wish. Oh, it was a as well. it was a more, yeah, because it, it. But can you see where I'm coming from with that? If yeah. you go there and someone who doesn't listen to our music turns up and sees that, they're just leave. They're gonna look and think, "What the fuck is going on there?" It's Chav Central. Yeah. 
Whereas if they actually put a bit of effort in and got dressed up, it wouldn't be as bad. No enough. problems <laughs> with the girls in rave gear because you're going to a rave. Yeah. Don't turn up in a fucking scanty out pair of shorts and a fucking ripped t shirt. <laughs> Have some pride in yourself. Yeah. Well, I like some tests like this, but we're in here on a Sunday, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But if I'm going out, have some pride in yourself. I, I don't know whether you can agree with I that or not. I don't not. disagree, mate. Honestly. But, I mean, yeah. just put some fucking effort, put some effort in. Because the oh. amount, you know what, I'll look at it for the amount of effort the DJs put in, preparing themselves, getting all the music, the amount of time yeah. the producers put in, creating <coughs> that music for them too. Put some effort in and make the place look a bit fucking nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'll probably get slated for that on this. But yeah. I'll really ask, because that's me, my opinion's my opinion. But that, that's you. where other people get. Yeah. That's why did I think that's why it has the stigma it has. Just be presentable. That's it. But I think can you split you can see where the stigma comes from of people who aren't from round here and know what it's about. Yeah. Looking from example down south, for example, they're gonna look at that and think fucking go on there. Yeah. Those goofy bastards. <laughs> but they're not, the people aren't. They're yeah. actually genuinely nice people. I know I know quite a lot of people who yeah. listen to that. They're all sound. Yeah. Just put a bit of effort in when you go out. <laughs> Make it be just like, oh, probably get slated for that. <laughs> it's my opinion, it's my opinion, and I, I can't change that. Right, uh, we've, we've still got, we've still got time. We've no still worries. got time. We've we'll still just got move on to the time. questions if that's all right now. Oh, here we go. Class. No, no, no. Yeah, so fine. just go into mode. Yeah, so that's mode is where I start to my production journey. Yeah, and I kick me DJing back off as well. So we'll just finish that little segment off there. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Hasn't um, gone the way you thought this, has it? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, man, it's a podcast, and it's. Yeah. Uh, I, I prefer where you you speak what you think, I speak what I think, and that's that's, mm. that's how it's gone. And to be honest, with you, it's been a good episode. I've loved, I've liked you. Um, so we might end up touching back on some of the stuff we've already, but uh, okay. this is a uh, production question. Uh, so if you've got any questions, uh, just send it into the podcast at It's Time to Refresh on Instagram. That's where most of our questions come from, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, or we've got a, a Facebook group as well. Just contact that or message me directly with your questions. Can maybe any sort of question, by the way. Any, we've had <laughs> really? weird shit on here, man. Yeah. Like weird shit. How many bog rolls do you go through a week? <laughs> hey, but it was, it was worse than that. So I remember I, couldn't say any I was on with that. I was on with Poom Styles and it's uh, great in he does. I lost wrote of, in and said what, what an ear for music that lad's got by the way. Jesus. Class. Yeah. Great producer. Very, very good. Nice lad as well. Very underrated, I think. Yeah, I think it's I think style he's again. overlooked. I think the style again, it's the same. Yeah, it's like absolutely because he doesn't bang out the I've done, so, I've done I've got to, I've got to know Daz over yeah. a while and he's what a good, good lad, lad he is, by the way. But yeah, someone wrote into the, that, uh, and it was a lass. I, th I think I know who she is, vaguely. I think she's been maybe to one of the Sank Nights mm. or something like that in 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 um, Carlisle. And she was, at, she was at Carlisle Uni. I don't know how much I can say, because it was anonymous, right? So, because you'll see why. But one of the one of the girls, on it had, uh, she lives with in the in the uni house, had said, uh, had, had fucking done a massive shit in the toilet blocked it <laughs> but tried flushing it loads of times and it had all overflown and she oh, done like a de detailed description on oh this on this right she thinks she's going and the, she had to call a plumber out and she rushed downstairs and she like, oh, I'm just going shopping I'll see you later and away and then yeah so that, so then she was like she, she said I know this is a music podcast but basically what should I do should we all should we all approach her because we know it's her she's just in denial I was just like I'm, I need, babe right there, well, like. well, no, I've got it on Instagram and I thought I need okay, to read this on the box it's absolutely oh, fucking mental God. so yeah if you want to ask questions then ask them so first question is <laughs> from shit down the bog. Oh, it's from know. Danny and it's um, production question uh, what do you listen to other than dance music um, when you're looking for inspiration to, uh, where do you we, draw it from we, we touched on that a little bit before yeah. so do you know what I mean I go like down the 60s, 70s, 80s looking for vocals and anything that's catchy yeah um, I actually do like classical music anyway yeah. it just it, it amazes me how they got that sound with back then Minimal, it amazes yeah, yeah, yeah. me that and I, I like I like listening to bits and bobs the time I think what can I use but Anything really, I mean, you can just be listening to the radio, can't you? And yeah. some little part of a track. You might hate the vocal and hate everything about it, but there's that one little bit, you think? Yeah. What's that? And it just comes from 
anywhere, doesn't it? Yeah. You know what? For example, I would never have done it to Wind and Fire September. It's just the fact that my ma likes it. So there's me inspiration. Is my ma? You know what I mean? Yeah. What does she like? And I'll have a go. I'll have a go with. Well, most people who know me know that I'll have a go fucking Santa remix anything. <laughs> no matter how outlandish it may be. Yeah. Um, fucking Agadu, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't nearly shout that out anyway. I wouldn't yeah. tell anyone that. Don't judge me on that one. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Paul O'H. It was his idea. Do that for me, lads. Fucking hell. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'll have a go at any of them, though. Like, yeah. great balls of fire. I, I think... It doesn't matter what it is, because every track you do is learning. Yeah. And it, when, when you get them difficult tracks that once you don't like or you get that difficult track, it, it makes you a better producer. Because you've learned something new on how to solve this type of thing. Like, you're struggling to get what you want. Yeah. And then when it does finally pull off, you get that sense of achievement. Oh, boss, isn't it? I can, I can see that. But yeah, I mean, the inspiration comes from anywhere, doesn't it? Like... When I, when I'm a lot of my like, inspiration comes from the Scouse House, though. It really does. Like the, the BCD, the Hypers, and it all yeah. stems from me, me, me younger days. That's all, where the, the all of my stuff comes though, from. nothing to do with bounce. I purposely go polar opposite. I listen to a lot of rock, rock music, and I still like uh, chord mm. progressions. Not steel, steel's wrong. There's a lot of hip hop. There's a lot of like old hip hop you can listen to to get the bellas out and the yeah. raps and that. And you think, fucking hell, I've missed that. Yeah, mm. I do that just because. I don't want to sound like I'm just another guy who's remixing the same tunes and it's like, why not look for st other stuff that you listen to? Mm. As I say, I, I, I stole, um, oh, do you know, um, oh, what is the band called? Fuck me, my mind's gone blank. Uh, oh, I was literally talking about them the other day with another producer. Pop punk band, they, uh, they did, um, Pretty fly for a white guy. The offspring. Oh, that's it, offspring. Yeah. So the offspring were uh, they did it. They did a tune. Boss called. riffs out of them, no. Well, there's, there's, I stole one directly, and no one's ever picked it up. And it was um, you've gone too far. You don't know that tune. Uh, um, there's a, there's a, there's a, I'm on there's it. A top I'm on layer, it. Top layer, uh, like guitar riff that goes over it. And I, I've stole it and put it in a tune, and no one's ever picked. Up no on one's it. picked up on it. And because you got that other one, that the guitar one, I think it's Reef. Put your hand in my hand, isn't it? And that's like a big. It's been used a few times. Yeah. Don't ask me to mime it out on it. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, next question is from Ben, and it is uh, favorite record label and why? We've had this on the podcast before. Mine changes on the daily. Like, uh, like my favorite one. Ever. Oh. Just for sheer, for, just for sheer, the sound of it. Yeah. Now it's gonna be PCD. PCD. I, I just said the same. Well, you've got Midtown as well, there, haven't you? But the two very different. If, you, if, you had, if I had to pick one, it'd be BCD, wouldn't it? That is. When you hear my sound of what I produce, it's very heavily influenced BCD. So I can't really say anything else. There's, mm. there's, 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 there's like BCD there. slash Boss. Yeah. In that area, it's BCD, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's all the same, isn't it? It's mm. like BCD. Then the answer yeah. is BCD. Um, as I say, we've talked about it on podcasts before, and I think I always give different different op uh, things. Probably that's my favourite label, but it's not my favourite tune. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favourite tune's not on that label. Exactly. That is my favourite label. Uh, next question is from Charlie, and it is: Do you think Bounce will ever enter the charts again, and why? If it slows down, there's a serious chance of it. Look at the, some of the stuff that's coming. It's got to yep. slow down. Yep. We were, it's we were just too fast. Hard about it, weren't we? About um, yeah. the stuff that's sort of you've seen in the charts now. There's one that she's just been listening to on the way down here. Um, oh, I'm going to feel like a right thick cunt because I don't know. Um, uh, I'm, I am actually just Googling this right now. It's all right. Well, um, yeah, it, it, but, the, but the, like, the ultimate aim for this, if, if it's got to go commercial again, so look how big Ultra Beat went with Pretty Green Eyes and Feeling yeah. Fine. Look how big they went. Um, they, the, they, 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 they were 140. It's got to was... go back down to that speed for it to have any, I mean, relevance of today yeah. and what is working today for any relevance of today. It's yeah. got to drop back down to that speed. Well, I'm not being funny. It's gonna sound fucking. People aren't gonna like this. It's gonna lose the donk. Yeah. You can you can still have a donk. You can, but, but it's, it's gotta be toned down. Yeah, toned down. It's yeah, gotta be like that. That big fucking massive. Do you know what they sound, boss? And I do like them. Yeah. But if you wanted to go more commercial and be more accessible to more people, yeah, it's gotta tone down a lot. Yeah. You're not gonna hear no fucking hard bass in the charts, are you? Mm. Really, with that big. Super fucking donk on it. It's, it's gonna not gonna work, is it? It's gonna be toned down a lot. Just so people know what I was talking about just then, the tune is called 
Oliver Tree and Robin Schultz Miss You. Yeah, it's literally mommy. basically like a fucking donk tune with a piano over it. It, it, it sounds like it. And it's, it's jump on a pump and it's basically like a fucking... Yeah. Um, as I said, Baddest of Them All as well, that was another one that was sort of faster speeds. I like it. Hey, honestly. Oh, just play sound design happiness. Yeah. Oh. Sound design happiness. I like the one before because it was Shadow J let the beat hit him before that. Before yeah. sound design. Yeah. Just play fucking sound design, it's so much better. <laughs> no, but what I mean is, so it's in the it chart. It is good, but yeah, the it's in the chart, but it's just, just play sound design. <laughs> Please. Um, and I think I actually. I don't like it because I'm so used to the other two that I think you fucking ruined it. Just a class chord progression, though, isn't it? It's like, mm. bum, 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 Yeah, it's okay, you wrong, but it's, it's, it's not. Class. Like, it's just never going to be. It's that, dead dreamy. It? Like, you, like, you, mm. you, like I, I think, oh, it's getting a bit overplayed, but then I hear it come on in the clubs one played it last Saturday, and I was just like, ah, that's why it's so good. Because when you, you get it on it's a big system, yeah. it's just different. Yeah. Class. Class. But as I say, like, well done to them. They, they were relatively unknown. And then all of a sudden, they've just got a fucking number one hit. So that's what you them. need, in it. But who's 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 out there <laughs> to go for it? There's, 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 there's one lad who's just been signed to Sony, haven't they? So I've seen that, good yeah. luck to him. Was that Halo because if anyone's gonna, if anyone's gonna, it's gonna be someone like that who's probably gonna go and do it if they're getting signed to, to the big labels where you've got that machine behind you. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That, that's well, that's what it takes, isn't it? You need. We discussed that, didn't we, when we were talking about different people being pushed for yeah. in the house, and they've got that machine behind them. Yeah, they've got that automatic push, haven't they? People are putting the money into them. People because are investing the investment. money into yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully someone gets that breakthrough soon. I hope it's me. <laughs> to be honest, I can't yeah. see it any time soon. But you never know. You never know. Do Stranger you? things have happened. <laughs> have. Um, we're just going to tie today up um, with a question I asked everybody. Uh, if you're going to get the electric chair because you've just been a complete mong, um, <laughs> you're fucking on the chair right now, and they're going to say you've got one more meal. What is it? Oh, mate, it's filled steak and chips. That's done. That easy. Fucking hell! Everyone says that. It's uh, my favourite meal. Are you having a starter? Just have another fucking fill of steak, lads. <laughs> um, nah, I don't really do starters and that now. So, dessert? Um, uh, yeah, it'd have to be sort of like chocolate brownie or something. Right. Yeah, just bevy? Some, simple. I don't think. Even on the electric chair, they wouldn't have a bevy. No, well, the pain, uh, the pain thing? of that's worse than being on the thing. Yeah, it's the, probably fancy, mate. Fancy, fancy, yeah. Fancy. Mm, not bad, not bad. Probably. So, you're a fillet steak type, type guy? Uh, yeah. I like, like fillet. Uh, I like I like a sirloin. Ribeye is sometimes a bit too fatty, if so but yeah. to fill it, you're gonna have sauce on top of it. <laughs> depends. Just depends. Right depends now, on the, depends on the day. That. Right now, if you're gonna get it, the food right now, you're gonna like your chair. Why are you getting sauce? I don't know. I like I like a peppercorn. I like. I don't know. That's it's not really a question <laughs> I get asked that often. <laughs> I'm looking on to doing something so. I'm looking on to doing something so bad that they put me in it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really? Um, yeah. Everyone who's ever produced Dunk gets fucking electric chair. <laughs> so to, for that. <laughs> sign, to sign off today. Yeah, that, um, that, that's why I keep calling it Scouse House. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't get it as bad. <laughs> yeah, to sign off today, um, do you want to plug anything you've got coming up? Um, yeah. Or plug what you've If got that's yourself? all right, yeah. yeah so my next outing is. My Friday the 16th of December that's in Ava's bar with yep. Paul for the dance have you been out lately then we've got another one on Boxing Night in Coyote yep. Ugly Bar in Liverpool City Centre and then the New Year's Eve house party and factory project which is a fucking bargain for New Year under pound a ticket free Same ale all night Paul advertised that yesterday yeah that's under pound a ticket free ale all night 8 till 6 right there, I'm going to plug this for him because I think he deserves it's it it's a fucking deal idea. and a half yeah. it, there's, there's early bird tickets as well isn't there that's yeah. 50 quid They've all gone. Oh, they've all gone. They oh, went within. Sorry. They went within about fucking. I was gonna say, an, they went quid, within about yeah. an hour. Okay. Hundred yeah. quid for your New Year's Eve night out is fucking class. I remember seeing flyers. We've talked about this in a podcast before. There was one I've seen for the pleasure rooms before, and it was uh, like twenty pound free bar. They wear bevies. Them they were giving you. No, but um, it was cream New Year's Eve mm. night, and I, I can't remember if it was what year it was. I was looking and. Back then, this we're talking twenty odd year ago, and it was it was like fifty pound entry. Then I think I'll say fifty just for the easiness. Mm -hmm. Might be more, but fifty pound entry. Look what he's doing at, for this event. Hundred pound for all, and your drink included. You wouldn't have got that for in cream then. Like it's I know it's, 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 it's two different things, but 
class. It's a bargain, mate. Could Liverpool get on it? Like, oh, it's a bargain, it isn't it? Wow. You can't. It's it's like you don't see things because you just think if you went to Liverpool City Centre, you pay the extra couple of pound entry fee yeah. everywhere you go, and you're spending twenty, thirty quid, forty, fifty quid in each bar anyway. Yeah, you could have, like just. The lineup he's got on spots as well. It's a yeah. house thing, like, and I've got to go and play funky house and go out my comfort zone, but so what? Um, and where can people find you then? Um, people can find me on Facebook, Alan Barwise, Alan Barwise on Instagram, ADF on SoundCloud, and um, I think I'm on TikTok. Right. So, yeah, if anyone wants to book me, I am, I am <laughs> available. here and available. Yeah, yeah, I'm Brad as well. Yeah, yeah, available, that's what it is. Let's go and find out what your skills are like next door and get the back to back done. <laughs> Right, I just want to say thank you for coming on, mate. It's right, been a nice pleasure. One. Thank you very much. Um, pleasure to meet you. And also, if uh, if you enjoy the podcast, then share it with your mates. That's what I say at the end of every episode because it makes a difference. Um, it's really it's reaching a lot of people's ears now on the on the back of people sharing it. Mm-hmm. Um, as I say, I'm a one man band. I do all this myself. I pay for promotion and stuff like that on on your Facebook, your Instagrams, and yeah. stuff like that. But as I say, natural, organic um, people who enjoy it, sharing it, uh, more than likely to have like-minded friends who, who would enjoy that. Yeah, so true. give it a share and uh, thanks for listening. I'll see you later.